Of all the things that students must learn by the time they leave elementary school, division might be the, one of the toughest. So here we look to tackle the progression of division. And it starts in third grade. So take this for example, 12 divided by 4. Let's see what happens. Well, we have two completely different models. And what this says is that the context, the story of the problem, plays a large part in developing students' conceptual understanding. In one, we have 12 bears with four in each group, which gives us three groups, and 12 bears shared with four friends, which leaves us three with each group. One model, well, that's measurement or repeated subtraction. The other is fair share, which I think we're all pretty familiar with. In one example, we have the group is unknown, and in the other, the size of the group is unknown. As students begin to develop their understanding of division, they probably begin to really rely on this fair share model. But 54, that's going to take a long time using fair share. So we need to put students in a place where they begin to become more flexible and efficient thinkers. So they might begin, instead of doing one by one, they might say, I'm going to take out five and put five in each group to start. Then with their remaining pieces, they might put two in each group, and so on. So within each group of six, they've placed a group of five, a group of two, and another group of two. So when you take 54 and you divide it into six groups, you get nine in each group. Now here students are making the connection between the concrete, the representation, and the abstract. And you know what? It all makes sense because students are building these pieces conceptually. As students begin to explore again in third grade, they deal with quotients which are greater than 10. Here students might begin to explore the idea of division with base 10 blocks. So they'll start with 72, and instead of putting it into three groups, they'll put it into three rows. They'll start by placing 10 in each row, then 10 in each row, and then they have that 10, and in order to place it in each row, they need to decompose it, make a fair trade. So you can see that when we take 72 and we divide it into three rows, we have 24 in each row. And then we want to make that connection from the concrete with the base 10 blocks to the representation. And how do we record our representation in a written expression? And some students might begin to collectively group their 10s, and that's where the 20 came from. The best part about this is that students are making a connection back to multiplication by using the distributive property, and they're seeing it visually. In fourth grade, yep, yeah, that's right, all that understanding we just saw should have been happening in third grade. But it might not be mastered. But in fourth grade, students will take four digit div dividends and one digit divisors and begin to extend their understanding of division. But one thing has to be taking place, and that's continually making the connection between models and representations and written expressions. Here we'll take 144 and divide it into nine groups, one into each group, and so on and so on and so on. Again, that fair share model. But what does that model look like as a written expression? Well, here are the students repeatedly removing groups of nine from the 144. Now, is this efficient? No, not at all. But it's really important that students work through this step and they realize what efficient and non-efficient thinking looks like. So after students do the example of 144 divided by 9, we might throw them in a place with this number where the dividend is 3,672. Well, they start removing groups of 9 and immediately they say, Oh, wow, I'm going to be here forever. This is going to take the longest time. Can, can I take out a group of 100? Sure you can. You can take out whatever groups you want. So they can take out a group of 100, a group of 200, and then another group of 100 nines, and then a group of 6 nines. Students have to make sense of the mathematics, and we can't tell them what to do. So here, they're removing their partial quotients. So from the expression they go ahead and create an area model. 
And what's beautiful about this area model is that it connects back to multiplication, except it's the area model for partial quotients. Then, as students begin to dive into fifth grade, they extend this understanding that they've built conceptually from third and fourth grade. Only this time, they deal with four-digit dividends and two-digit divisors. The big piece here is that students deal with numbers and equations where they'll only have whole number quotients. All that means is that the decimal shouldn't be in the answer, but it can be in the dividend and we can have a decimal in the divisor. So here we make that connection again between the representation and the expression. And we write our partial quotients off to the side. Just helps us keep track. So students might not know all their multiplication facts, but they do know three or four. So here's their products of 32. Every student will know these. Let them start there. Now, decimals. What about decimals? Well, this same understanding of partial quotients and area model can be applied to decimals. Here we have one in 24 hundredths, and we're continually removing groups of four hundredths. Connections are being made, and it's a progression, which makes it much easier for students to move between whole numbers to decimals and from decimals back to whole numbers. There's just an example. Instead of using three tens, a student might think flexibly and use 25 four hundredths. Now in sixth grade, students encounter the term standard algorithm. And all that really means is a series of repeated steps. So if students have used the same understanding of partial quotients from third grade, this is a standard algorithm. So let's see what a student might do. Well, in 8,425, I want to take out two, remove 200 groups of 32, and then 60 groups of 32, and three groups of 32. Let's look what it looks like with the standard algorithm. Well, 32 doesn't go into 8, but 32 goes into gazinta. What does that mean? And here we have the traditional algorithm, which many of us are familiar with. But you see how there is a connection between the two. Which one has understanding? So there's lots of things taking place all the way up from third grade to sixth grade. Let's not rush it. Remember that the turtle won the race. Let's look to continue the conversation on Twitter or hit me up on my blog. Thanks for stopping in.